Welcome to this edition of Designing Spaces, the show that's all about you and your space, your home and surroundings. I'm Debbie Marie. And I'm David Jones. And we've got a hardware spin on today's show, which is code for gearheads, stick around. You will love what you're about to see. And we also have a remodeling project. We'll learn how to finance that remodeling project. Plus, we'll end up at one of my favorite spots in the garage, and that's the tool bench. <laughs> so stay right where you are. It's all coming up right now on Designing Spaces. Okay, well, let's take a look at a home improvement project. Now, what if you can make your garage warm and comfortable in the winter? Think of all the things you can do in your garage if it was heated. Absolutely. Well, Designing Spaces is going to show you a way how you can do just that without affecting the rest of your home. But first, we had to find a place where they know a little something about cold winters. How about Racine, Wisconsin? To take a closer look. Hi, I'm Alan Ball. I am here with Jamie Toonstra in a typical garage in Racine, Wisconsin in winter. And it is cold. I wouldn't want to work on my car in this garage. If you've ever banged your knuckles in cold weather, you know what I'm talking about. Most garages aren't heated, so what's the solution? It's called the hot dog heater. It's made by Modine. All right, now why wouldn't a person want to have a, uh, oh, get a gas-powered or electric uh, space heater and just put that in their garage? Well, space heaters tend to produce carbon dioxide. Without proper ventilation, you could have a death trap. Ooh, not good. Uh, what else? Well, also vapor from the gasoline and paint thinners tend to collect in the garage, which could turn your garage into an explosive situation. You mean kaboom? Exactly. Plus, heaters are not a good solution to heat your garage in the winter. They're not very efficient. Anything else? Yeah, if you use a gas-powered heater, you'll get a lot of moisture buildup in the garage, which could rust out your tools and anything metal. Okay, so tell me about the hot dog. Uh, how does it work? Well, it's pretty basic. You go to your thermostat that's located on the wall. When you want it to turn on, you turn the thermostat up, mm -hmm. the unit will turn itself on. And when you want it to shut off, you turn the thermostat back down and it'll shut itself off. So you, you don't have to have it running all the time? You can get programmable thermostats to program the unit to turn on during the day and to cool off at night. Or you can have one where you can turn the fan on to run continuously to circulate the air in the garage. That's great. How, how warm can you get it? Well, you can get the garage pretty much as warm as the thermostat will allow it to go. Okay. All right. Uh, now, one of the things that you mentioned about a, a gasoline uh, heater was carbon monoxide. Is that a problem with the hot dog? It's not a problem with the Modian hot dog. Uh, carbon monoxide is always a worry when you're burning any fuels, uh -huh. but this unit is set up with a safety switch that will not allow those gases to come back into the garage. Oh, very smart. Okay. Um, now, I have a smaller garage than this. Uh, I wish I had one this big, but I have a smaller garage. Uh, do I get a smaller unit? We make six different sizes, anywhere from 30,000 BTUs up to 125,000 BTUs. The smaller unit, the 30,000, would handle a single car garage. You can heat any residential garage that, okay. that's out there. You can put them in commercial buildings, greenhouses, pole barns, any hobby centers that you have. So there's a lot of places they can go. Okay, I'm sold. Where do I get one? Well, you can contact us at modine.com forward slash hot dog or contact our toll free number. Okay. You going to show us how it's installed? Absolutely. Installation is a five-step process. Here we see our certified installers hanging the unit, which is always up in the ceiling. Now they are hooking up the electrical connections to the heater. Once the electrical connections are made, the fuel line is connected to the heater. Now we're on to another key point of the installation, which is connecting the vent pipe, which keeps dangerous gases out of the garage. And lastly, we move away from the unit and connect the thermostat in a convenient location. Now that the thermostat is connected and the fuel lines checked, all we have to do is fire up the unit. Wow, it is much more comfortable in here. Now you can work on your car, play with the kids, do some woodworking, and you don't have to bundle up to do the laundry. Absolutely, and I think our, our crew is going to be a lot happier breaking all the equipment down in this nice heated garage. Well, Jamie, I want to thank you very much. Thank you. And for Designing Spaces, I'm Alan Ball. You know, after all the great ideas that we've shown today, I'm sure our viewers are ready to get started on some home improvement oh, projects. Oh, absolutely. Are you ready for another fantastic remodeling project? Sounds good. What is this one? I'll tell you. Okay. Next week, because we're out of time on today's show. But all right. thanks for watching, everyone. I'm David Jones. And I'm Debbie Murray. We'll see you next time on Designing Spaces. Bye-bye.
For more information about anything you've seen on today's show or to find out how to be part of the show, log on to designingspaces.tv. You can visit these websites to learn more about the participants on this edition of Designing Spaces.